there is a hidden criteria in the big three for this everyone else bucket that we've defined. So in-service event, or as, as Jason says, time in service, right? A current diagnosis in a nexus. The current diagnosis, there's a hidden criteria in there called continuity of symptoms. Some people misspeak and say continuity of care. You don't need documented medical evidence. And I'm, I'm going to give an example here. It's just continuity of symptoms, right? And I'm glad you brought up statements, uh, especially when, when, I, when I tell veterans to write a statement, I tell them to, it's, you're not writing a statement for the CMP examiner. I'm telling you right now, the CMP examiner does not care about your statement. You're writing it to the rater. That's, that's the person I would write it to. And really, it's, it's the BVA if you have to go there. Um, that's my personal opinion. But uh, when it comes to continuity of symptoms, I think migraines is a perfect example. Okay. Um, even if you had a dot, let's just, you've been out of the Marine, you've been out of the military for 20, I keep saying Marine Corps, you've been out of the, Marine, the military for 20 years. Okay. Um, let's say you did have a diagnosis in service of migraines, which is the golden ticket diagnosis. Let's say you had a complaint of migraines, which is not as good, but still pretty good, right? You had medical evidence. Um, 20 years go by, you have zero complaints. And I mean zero. Boom. You submit a claim. Um, can the VA service connect you? Yes, they can. Uh, can the VA say you lack continuity of symptoms? It's not the VA. It'll be the CMP examiner. The CMP examiner will say, hey, Something, 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 although the veteran was diagnosed in service, you know, symptoms didn't lead them to seek uh, care. There's no continuity of symptoms here. Therefore, it's not chronic in nature. Their thought process is if it was bad, you would go get seen for it. That's the dummy version of saying that. OK, um, and then, yes, the VA will say on your decision letter. And I hate I cannot stand these. It'll say you have evidence from service. You have a current diagnosis. However, the CMP examiner opined, whatever it is, it says, blah, 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 uh, continuity of, of symptoms. And so if that's you and a lot of veterans fall into that bucket, statements become, that's when statements become critical, right? Because now you say, hey, maybe I have private insurance and I've been seeing my private health care for migraines. That would be, again, the golden ticket. Not everyone has that, right? Maybe you just went to CVS and you're buying Tylenol and you're taking four Tylenol every day. You're talk, you're taking the instant Tylenol version, the XR, which is like a slow drip Tylenol version, right? You're doing some type of Excedrin, Advil, something for 20 years. Writing that statement all of a sudden fills that gap. And so that's the power of a statement. Um and so con continuity of symptoms is one, it's kind of like an uppercut from the VA where you're not expecting it. It's just bam, hits you right <laughs> in your face. And I've seen that a lot. And generally speaking, I would recommend a supplemental appeal just with a statement explaining your continuity of symptoms. I've seen people upload receipts from like 10 years ago of with a date on it about a uh, purchase from CVS. And although that may seem stupid, that That's is solid. evidence other than medical, right? Now, who has receipts? I don't know. But a lot of crazy people, you know, right. do their checkbook in writing, too. I don't. I just use the app, right? <laughs> but uh, um, if that's you, great. If not, a statement really does come in clutch. And uh, I cannot stand seeing continuity of symptoms.